Greetings. This is Arvette McLean of Speak the Universe Listens. your thoughts, change your life. Step into the bigness of you. The universe listens, and today's topic is the divine feminine. And I have Deborah joining me. How are you, Deborah? I'm great, Arvet. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm terrific. <laughs> so this is an uh, interesting topic. Um, I like when we talk about things that you know are like a feminine nature because I tend to never think about feminine things. So I was interested in knowing more about this topic. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think typically we, we're always discussing um, our higher selves and consciousness. Um, but there, I'm, as I'm learning and exploring more, there are different components to the consciousness. And uh, that includes the divine feminine as well as the masculine. Um, but as I read more about it and, and things kind of kept coming toward me, um, to, you know, kind of build upon my knowledge or what I already understood of the consciousness, um, I was just drawn to, so what is divine femininity when it relates to consciousness and what I've learned so far, cause it's a very vast topic. Um, we'll probably, we may need to do a part two one day, but um, so far what I've learned is that it's, an, it's just another form of energy and um, anyone can, can, can have it. So it's energy that anyone can harness and tap into at any moment. And for some people, um, it's the level of consciousness that they're not necessarily aware of it just is maybe very natural to them just depending on you know uh, what level of consciousness that they have achieved in this in this realm um, but you could be a male or female and have a divine feminine level of consciousness so um, what i mean by a level of energy it's basically just a part of your consciousness that correlates with empathy, um, intuition, um, nature, nurturing, and everyone can have that, no matter if they're male or female or other. So um, that was what made me a little bit more interested in finding out more about it. So. In a nutshell, that 
that's that's what it is but yeah what is your take on that oh well it's interesting to me because just yesterday I left a message for you and I was speaking about how when I'm in work mode which I have not been in work mode for since 2005 so that's what 15 years um but when I've been in work mode I'm very action oriented go get it set Mm -hmm. goals accomplish them um push 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 force 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 you know that type of energy and um Mm -hmm. I've been hesitant to return to a working environment because I don't want to repeat I don't want to be in that space anymore and so mm-hmm. uh, with studying this topic a little bit, what I realized is that really that energy that I associate with work, <laughs> that really is a masculine, the, the masculine energy, and that um, most of us associate more with the masculine energy, mostly because, you know, it's a male-dominated society. And so Absolutely. we get caught up into that energy and we're not, um, I guess, round. So both males and females need both types of energy. It needs to be more of a rounded, balanced energy. But just focusing so heavily on one, you know, it causes you to be off balance. Absolutely. And it's interesting that you said that, um, you know, the patriarchal society has influenced um, us to rely heavily on our masculine level of consciousness or energy consciousness. Um, and in doing so, you know, as you mentioned, it, it, it kind of shifted cultures and the way our world operates. Um, I've been listening to different um, talks about the shift in our economy in the United States alone and um, the shift towards having more of a uh, feminine consciousness and leadership. So we talk about politics or um, different structures in how our economy and how our um, communities are run. There's this new shift away from patriarchal and away from masculine energy just a little bit because it's so heavy in that because of how we've developed in a level that is so heavy in masculine energy. So as a society, as a, um, a culture, just kind of worldwide, we're shifting more now into the female realm um, of that energy consciousness. So in uh, the political office, you know, some of the energy that's associated with the feminine divinity is um, collaboration, intuition, um, creativity. You're starting to see that um, become a little bit more of the norm in our society and the corporate world and um, politics. And as you mentioned, it's important because it brings a balance. So um, that was a very interesting aspect to just have too much of one and not the other can create a little bit of uh, need for a calibration, you know, because it throws um, everything off just a little bit. It gives a skewed perspective on how one should be and how people should interact. And so, yeah, people feel that, but you may not necessarily recognize what it is that you're feeling. Exactly. To dive a little bit deeper. Yeah. I know when I, um, like I said, I had a totally different way of showing up in the world. And mm-hmm. so I, I moved away for three years. And when I came back, I was a totally different person. And so um, my business partner back then, I used to have a school called um, Nubian Village Academy. So it was a private school. And um, you know, I was a certain way when I left. <laughs> and then when I came mm-hmm. back, I remember my partner coming to me and she was just like, this is what's going on and da 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 And I was like, interesting. Mm. Yeah. And she kind of looked at me and she was just like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know you anymore. Like, 
because that's totally not the way I would typically, you know, in the past I would have responded, but it was like I had shifted into a space where I'm like, okay, I don't have to act, do, do, do. I need to mm -hmm. listen, um, listen to, you know, my environment, listen Process. to my intuition and figure mm -hmm. out from there, like what to do versus be in action, must do something yeah. now, must force the Take situation care. to go the way we want it to go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that um, that kind of laid back approach, like to kind of listen for guidance, I think is not valued yet. Um, I think we still mm -hmm. think that, you know, must must make decision must go must you know because mm -hmm. even even now because the people that i interact with most people that I interact with now they didn't know me before so they would probably mm -hmm. be totally shocked if they knew how I was, <laughs> how i was before but um even with me just like having this space of you know just let's let me listen to my guidance and things like that if i offer like if i say oh this is a situation I'm dealing with. They immediately say, so what are you going to do about it? Mm. And I'm saying, okay, I'm just putting it out there and I'm going to let the universe <laughs> kind of guide me. <laughs> right. of me, you know, and it's, it's just like a flip and just learning a little bit about this topic. I'm realizing, oh, okay, I'm now I'm tapping into more of that feminine energy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And there's a time and a place you know, again, we, we each harness both. Um, it's both needed. And um, yeah, but I, I understand what you're saying, where you reached a point of needing calibration, you know, like, understanding when it was needed, but um, then seeing when it was not needed and tapping into that feminine energy. So you can listen to your intuition, you can be guided by the universe. Um, that's where I am now because I, I'm, I'm finding out where that balance is for me as well. Um, so it is helpful to, to be aware, um, but being aware is just one step. <laughs> I have to put in, for myself, I have to uh, take the initiative and be intentional. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's step two for me. And what does that look like? Well, so be, because I too have been influenced by our society to um, tap in more so to my masculine energy, um, I have to see or recognize when that masculine energy is like kind of showing up and be aware of my environment and see if it's needed at that time. So, um, for example, um, you know, being, being a manager at work, um, part of my personality being um, uh, introverted, I work great with other introverts because they don't necessarily need me to come consistently check on them. They are fine when I give them the direction and tell them exactly what it is that I need them to do. And I can check on them at the end of the day and they've done it because they don't necessarily need con constant interaction. So that's the feminine side. Of, that's my divine feminine leading me in my management role in being passive and not recognizing that there are multiple people on my team that have different personalities. And so my introverts are okay with my passivity. They're okay with me being passive and checking on them once or twice throughout an eight hour period. But my, um, my extroverts need my interaction. So they need me to step into my masculine energy and um, be more direct with them and um, you know, be more decisive with giving them um, concrete um, instruction and not necessarily allowing them to uh, com accomplish their tasks based on their own timeline. They need direct, 
um, direct instruction. They need constant checking in because they're used to that consistent interaction being extroverted. So that's one way that I have to remind myself to um, be intentional because it's in that regard, it's sometimes easier for me to, to be in my feminine energy and be a little bit more passive and um, allowing people to be more creative because I'm in my creative space too, in that feminine energy. Um, so just being an aware in that respect. Um, but then on the opposite side, on the other hand, in relationships, I can tend to tap into my masculine energy um, a bit too much <laughs> and get in the mindset of um, providing more of a drill sergeant. I think you mentioned that when we, when we talked yesterday of, of an, having an idea of, of things just going one particular way when I'm in my own space and then having the expectation that people will follow my drill sergeant mode. Um, and that's tapping into that, that masculine side. When it's not necessarily effective in the energy that I'm bringing to that group setting within the household, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I think um, that would be an example because when we talk about masculine and feminine energy, like you say, they're both needed, both necessary, and um, everybody has both. But we tend to rely more heavily. Most of us in our culture rely more heavily on our masculine energy, which is a great, you know, it's a, a great energy to have. Um, but when it's out of balance, then it would cause things like being controlling and being a drill sergeant mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that type of energy because it's just out of balance. But I think I'm not really sure that um, like the interactive piece, I don't know if I would characterize that as the masculine or the feminine, because like what you were describing about work and having to be more hands on with the extroverts, um, would that be, because it seemed like that could be seen as a nurturing role as well um being more hands-on yeah so so extroverted people on my team need more i think direct interaction and that's what i understood as maybe more of a masculine energy um decisiveness mm -hmm. you know direct forwardness um i don't want to say confrontational but definitely you know in your face a little bit in a positive way um but and and yes so it doesn't necessarily equate that because you're extroverted that that's a masculine quality this is true but just my tendency sometimes to um lean into my feminine energy a little bit more it taps into that side of um being a little more passive and um, less in your face, less direct. So still giving direction and being somewhat direct, um, but leaning more on intuition rather than hard facts and rules, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So yes, I agree. It doesn't necessarily correlate that if you're extroverted, you have, uh, you know, male energy looming or the opposite, but just me personally, I know that I tend to, um, I have to remember to kind of accommodate different characteristics, you know, I tend to, to my team members more as individuals and um, lead them in the way that they can best be led based on if they're in, um, extroverted or introverted and having to adjust and balance my my female male energy based off of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, it makes sense. And I, I, I guess I was just saying that I thought that, um, I guess, and it depends on your team, you know, 
because I would think that someone who needs more hands-on, that they would need more nurturing. But you're saying more hands-on is more in your face and directives or whatever. So um, I guess it depends on, you know, who you're working yeah, with. Yeah, the person. That's yeah. true. Yeah, because some people and more hands-on would be more direction, um, nurturing, more kind of coddling or coaching or checking in. Yeah. yeah. So that, that brings another variable of, the variety of people just in the world like yeah you know needing the different um different things to motivate mm -hmm. yeah so but I, I like that that's an interesting concept that you're actually saying that to be intentional about which energy you're putting out at any one time mm -hmm. so I, i'll definitely give that some thought um what do you think about just working to balance yourself overall <laughs> so that's pretty tricky because it kind of goes into um, just having that heightened sense of a, heightened sense of awareness of where you are at any given moment, really, um, because we're around different people every day. So, you know, I think I think just kind of establishing. Uh, time with yourself to see what happens like where where you lean which way you lean in most when you are balanced and centered right are you having equal amounts of both feminine and masculine energy um, are you being influenced by culture and what you see on masculine and feminine energy um, yeah so i think that energy fluctuates definitely throughout the day and and then it's it's impacted by the energy we're getting from other people um cause, because i know when i'm around my girlfriends um my feminine energy turns up to 10. <laughs> it does yeah because i feel like i'm feeling the other energy of the women around me and they're you know femininity um and if i'm surrounded by more by men then i'm leaning in more into my masculine energy just a tad bit um but i need to spend more time trying to figure out where that's coming from you know is that because um that's what i'm because my sensitivity and what i'm feeling so then i sort of lean into what i feel Whereas for other people, it may be the complete opposite if they're around, if they're around. And it doesn't necessarily mean, so I need to retract that because just because I'm around a, a lot of women at the time doesn't mean they're all giving off this divine feminine energy. It could be, uh, yeah, it could be a mix. Um, but for me, I feel like it, it ticks up a notch. So it may not even be what um, I'm feeling from them. It just may be, what, how I lean into what I calibrate towards because of the environment and the situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I know I lean heavily on the masculine um, energy in, you know, like I say, in a work environment, but I grew up with brothers. Like I had three brothers and um, I guess to hang with them, <laughs> You know, and it's funny because people always say, you're so feminine, you're so feminine. Like, I, I've heard it all my life. They've, I even had a nickname called Prissy Cat. <laughs> when Aww. I was a little girl, they used to call me Prissy Cat. They're like, you are so prissy. And that stayed with me all the way until I was an adult. Prissy, the Prissy Cat, yeah. the Prissy Cat. But I'm, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a lot of masculine energy or whatever. But um, one last question would be, what would you say to do to help someone to start tapping into or developing their own feminine energy, whether they're male or female? Mm -hmm. um, I think meditation is always key to grounding and connecting you with your higher self and, and allowing, you know, 
allowing God, allowing the universe to point you in the, the right direction. Um, and, 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 and for you to get a better understanding of self, meditation is key as well. So, but, um, you know, you were just supposed continue. to say, Arvet, that's such a masculine question. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> but see, so I didn't even recognize it as so. So I'll let you leave it into that. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that, that is still a good question, you know, because that there, there are beings out there that want to, <laughs> that's how they operate. They need to know what to do. Um, and, and the research that I've done or just reading and, and listening, um, has given some good tips for me. So if, if you're specifically looking for, um, ways to tap into feminine energy, they mentioned like spending time outdoors and nature, um, you know, um, spending time a lot, doing a lot of self-care, those types of things. Um, so because this I was in preparation for this topic. I'm a little more knowledgeable on what to do in that respect, leaning into the feminine energy. But as far as tapping into masculine, you know, that I'd have to do some more thinking and and research on that. Yeah, um, I, I think we don't really need to know. I, honestly, I don't think we need to know how to tap into our masculine. I think. 99.9% .9 of us do that it's very well. Yeah. And, um, you know, like it's I said around. about being off balance, not not having enough feminine energy can cause you to, um, I guess, be controlling and um, mm. it can it, just, it can get out of hand. Um, so I guess the, when I said about the masculine, I was kind of saying what can men do to increase their, uh, their feminine energy feminine and why energy. would they want to? Mm hmm. Oh, so yeah, good question. I think the same for men, you know, spending time with nature, self care, um, are, are all good tips. And why would a man want to? So I think that will allow him to um, better collaborate with others. So it just improves it improves and enhances relationships overall when you're tapped into that feminine energy because you're looking to collaborate, um, you're looking to create more, you're um, leaning more into your intuition rather than looking for facts and hard data. Um, and it just opens you up more to, um, you know, being a little more caring and nurturing. Um, which we all have that ability, but again, we need the balance because as you mentioned, we're surrounded. We already know all too well how to tap into the masculine part. So that research and, and um, um, time we put into figuring out the tapping into the feminine will balance that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I do want to add one more adjective to that and that's um, imagination or being imaginative uh, yeah because that yes. that's the key to creation is um yes. and i think that's a very one of the qualities or energies that fall under the feminine energy mm -hmm. yeah. yes so yes you. i agree yeah this was a, a nice awesome. topic to talk about and to really to um try to wrap your mind around because i did notice a clear distinction between before and after and as i was saying to you on yesterday being afraid yeah. to go back into the work world because i didn't want to go back into that energy but not even mm -hmm. realizing that that's what i was saying <laughs> but right. yeah i've gotten so accustomed to being versus doing um mm -hmm. and i do when i do what my um intuition tells me to do versus me trying to be analytical and logical and you know figuring things out which is how I used to totally go about living and I'm just like I don't want to slip back to that because this this side of the fence is so much more fun and rewarding <laughs> right and it makes life it so much easier it's so much easier yeah. 
Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, it does tend to make it less stressful. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> All right. Well, thank That's you awesome. again for this topic. Oh, you're welcome. Thank okay. you for joining me in the discussion. Yeah, <laughs> I hope people have some takeaways from this because, like, divorce is more to talk about. Is more like we can come back and um, spend more time on this really discussing like what are the traits and how do you um, tap into it it's something to really start wrapping your mind around so I was happy to be introduced to this topic and to learn a little bit more so I hope everyone else feels the same way so make yeah, sure you. yeah so make sure you guys check out my website at rvetmcclain.com please click the like button below and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed and we love your comments so please if you have any comments please do so below until next time this is our vet and deborah bye guys bye.